Rangel, and I'm going to be solving problem 6.44 of night. So this is problem 6.44 of night. So we're going to use, so we're just going to read it together. Compressed air is used to fire a 50 gram ball vertically upward from a one meter tall tube. The air exerts an upward force of two newtons on the ball as long as it is inside the tube. How high does the ball go above the top of the tube? Okay. And then they want us to find out what is the connection to kinematics. So the first thing that I do, I make a drawing. So we're going to start inside a tube. Have a ball, have a ball, and we have a ball. So we're going to have initial velocity zero equals zero meters per second. Velocity one, we don't know. It's going to have, it's going to travel with this velocity. It's going to have an acceleration here acceleration in the y. It's going to have an acceleration here and afterwards it's going to have it's going to be a free fall problem. Well, the only solution is gravity. And it's going to go up to the highest point zero. Okay? So this is how our drawing looks like. And in kinematics problems, we usually do kinematics when acceleration is constant. So acceleration is going to be constant at two different instances of the problem. We have the first part of the problem, that is when acceleration, when acceleration is upward, Y direction with the force of two newtons, and then we have the free fall acceleration of gravity pointing down. Okay, so I'm going to have acceleration in the y1 and acceleration in the y2 for the two instances in time. So acceleration y1 equals the summation of the forces over the mass. And here is the same, the summation of the forces over the mass. So in this case, solution Y1, we have the force of the air minus the force of gravity over the mass. Since the force of gravity is of gravity plus mass times acceleration, mass times gravity, we're going to leave it as G. So the force of the air over the mass minus the gravity is going to be A1. The same for A2. It's only the force of gravity over the mass, and that's it. It's gravity pointing downwards. Mm -hmm. So acceleration in the Y1 equals to the force of the air, that's 2, Newtons over zero, 50 grams. So that's it 50 grams times grams up, grams down, kilograms up. So that's one kilogram is a thousand grams. So 0 0.05 kilograms minus 9.81. Here is minus 9.81 meters per second square. So we have a y1 equals to 2, 2 over 0 0.05 is 40 minus 9.81 is 30.2 meters per second square. So you have the acceleration 1 and acceleration 2. 
So the strategy that we're going to do is that we're going to find from the velocity from zero to the velocity when it leaves, when it leaves the one meter to this is one meter. And then we're going to have the initial velocity. That will be we're going to have that velocity will be the same velocity that velocity that we found here, it will be the same velocity that it leaves the tube and it's going to reach up to the highest point where velocity again is zero. So we're going to do that. We have everything that's been given to us. We're going to analyze for the one meter, from zero to one meter. That is, we're going to have an initial position, a final position, an initial velocity, a final velocity and acceleration one at a time. So we're going to start from zero and we end up one meter. Initial velocity is zero and the ends, we don't know. Gravity, we said is 30.2 meters per second squared and time, we don't know. Everything that we don't know, it's velocity one and time. So we're going to look our or equations of kinematics. So we're going to relate these forces back to our kinematic equations. So it's going to be final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration time. Initial final position equals initial position plus initial velocity time plus one half acceleration time squared and velocity one final equals velocity initial final plus two acceleration changing y. So since we don't have a time, I'm going to use this equation. So initial velocity square, final velocity square, velocity one square equals velocity zero square plus two acceleration changing y. We're looking for velocity one, so it's already solved. So this is zero. And the changing velocity, the changing position is position one minus position zero and position zero is zero. So we have initial velocity one square equals two a y one. So initial velocity, final velocity one equals to the square root of two a y one. OK. So we're going to replace those numbers. Velocity one equals square root of two times 30.2 times one. So 30.2 times one times two, the square root of that is 7.77 meters per second. So that's the speed that the ball is leaving the tube, the one meter tube. Now we are going to calculate how far does the tube goes. So again, we're going to do the same, but now from one to the highest point. Go down from one to the highest point. So initial velocity, final velocity, initial velocity, final velocity, initial position, final position, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration two, and time. So initial position is one, final position, we don't know. So here, um, I'm going to put, okay, yes, I'm going to leave it as one. Here, initial velocity is 7.77 meters per second, and the highest point is going to end. Acceleration, we say that now is only purely on gravity, so free fall motion. So the unknown points are the final position and time. OK, 
my equations are the same. Now we're just going to replace those numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're asking us how they're asking us how high does the ball goes above the tube? So we're actually looking for the changing y. Okay, again, I don't have time. I'm going to use this equation. I have everything to solve this equation. So I'm going to have velocity 2, 2 equals velocity 1 square plus 2 acceleration changing y. I'm looking for changing y. This is 0. So I have negative initial velocity square over 2 acceleration equals to the change in y, so that equals to negative parenthesis 7.77 meters per second squared over 2 over 2 times negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay. Negatives cancelled out. So the change in y equals 7.77 squared over 2 times 9.81, 16, 19.62, and 7.77 squared, 60. Sixteen point thirty seven over nineteen point sixty two. So the change in y equals three point zero seven seven. And this, if we want to have it in once and Three significant units, it will be 3.01. I'm sorry, no, not 0.1, 3.1. So our answer is height 3.1. And I left, it, I left it as a change in Y because it will be the difference from this point to this point. Okay, that's it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact anytime. Thank you.